hyped for not just being a homegrown Blue Jay product from where he's from, his father's name, Hall of Famer. We talk about those that have been hyped, some of the uh, young players that we have watched come up and deliver. Let's listen to what his manager had to say about his performance. He was comfortable, and that's how he plays. And I figured he would be. Actually, I was more nervous than he was. To tell you the truth, because you know, can't imagine having all that pressure, all this press and stuff. And he's who he is. He's comfortable. He's relaxed and. He enjoyed the game. To make that first play that he made, that means you got to be comfortable to make that play that he made That on a slow roller. That's when I knew, oh, yeah, he's relaxed. Uh, yeah, I think his father, too, was, uh, was yeah. very nervous as well. So does he remind you of anybody? We're not putting him in any Hall of Fame right. category yet, but just in terms of the way he is at the plate. So some of the things he does, he, he's got tendencies of some of the greatest hitters that ever played the game. And uh, you're talking about a Ted Williams or Mike Piazza, Barry Bonds. Manny Ramirez, just somebody that, that played just a few years ago. And, you know, we looked at some things. And, you know, what he does that is really so impressive, he gets into a great load position right there. You see Manny over there, his bat's almost perpendicular to the ground. Guerrero gets to that same spot. And now before they release, that bat tilts, the barrel tilts over the back shoulder. It gets in the right plane and then they just fire it. It's almost like that. When the bat gets to that spot behind that right shoulder, it gets into that Ferris wheel type of rotation. Now what can you show? Yeah, give us a little. Well, so so a lot of these guys, you know, they're starting. You know, Guerrero, he's got his bat way back here, but when he gets to the load position, it's here. It's here. This is a cocking of the wrist. The bat is almost perpendicular. The barrel is almost perpendicular. Then as they start to do their swing, the bat head drops. It drops behind the right shoulder, gets here, and then now it is on plane, and bam. That's where you get all the power. And if you watch guys, you know, you watch tapes of whether it's Piazza, Manny Ramirez, Guerrero now, his, his old man, Babe Ruth. Ted Williams, all of these guys, you know, they get to a position where I'm here is the load and then the swing starts with boom, this kind of drop. Now, it's not a violent this, but I'm back here. The bat head drops the barrel and then that's how you hit. Where's I mean, the, that's where you get that is power. That, is that your bat, by the way? This is a Gabe Kapler. Back when, remember, I mean, you can work here and then go manage in yes, the big the leagues. Phil, yeah, he was, he's at a low. My man, Gabe, and, and thank you. Whipper, thanks for leaving the bat. <laughs> Phillies may need that a little bit later, too, in their stretch run. Bellinger, when you look at the major league record he set, accomplishing the most total bases before the first of the month, if you go back, Alex Rodriguez, Larry Walker, they were MVPs that season. Bellinger is on that mark as he moves past Chase Utley and is the all-time record holder. But well, we saw Bellinger not just third major league season. I know you follow him closely, about a 260, 270 hitter with power. We saw that first World Series exposed a little bit better last postseason. But what's made the leap? What's allowed him to make this major MVP-like jump to start this year? Well, I, I think a lot of it just has to do with the plate discipline. Now, they, they've got a new hitting coach over in L.A., uh, Robert Van Scoyke, and, and Brant Brown now has been elevated. And, and both of those guys spend a lot of time, yes, the mechanics and but it's basically approach. And what you mean by approach is, you know, Bellinger this year is making better contact than he has ever in his career. He's not swinging at pitches out of the zone, taking a lot more pitches, not swinging and missing. And, and when I say approach, when you go up there and you are disciplined enough to say, I am just going to wait for my pitch, it's, there's a saying, it's better to be 0-1, meaning 0-1 in the count, than 0 for 1. So it's okay to take a strike. It's okay to take two strikes. You wait for the pitcher to leave something where you do damage. And right now, Bellinger's not missing anything. And he, the plate discipline has been unbelievable. Yeah, and even it's not all about home runs and the total bases. No. Uh, they need an RBI sacrifice fly from him. He delivers. He's so I'll well. tell you, an example, earlier this year, there were runners on first and third, and he's up there. He had two strikes on him. Last year, he would have been swinging from his you-know-what, and if he misses it, he strikes out. Battles, shoots the ball to the shortstop, beats the ball out to first base. Runner comes in from third. It's an RBI. Last year, like I said, <laughs> yeah. swinging and missing. And that is, that's discipline. It's very tough to, to, it's tough to change, but once you do it and you have success, man. He's young enough and smart enough to have uh, adjusted. All right.